everyone, welcome back to Young and Wifed Up. This is Marcella. And I'm Gabby. And thanks for joining us this week for another episode. I can't get through the end of that sentence without laughing. I don't know what to tell you, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, if you guys want to check out the resources for today's episode, head to youngandwifedup.com. You can also join our Facebook group. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can keep making some more awkward videos for you guys. <laughs> also, if you'd like to support us, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. You can also shop with our sponsors, which include Imperfect Foods, Covenant Eyes, and Earth Hero. And also leave a five-star review with Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and now Spotify. Yes, please. All of our Spotify, Spotify listeners, Spotify. please rate you're us on there. Spotify. We know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> you down you know what we should do in the facebook group we should do a poll what yes. do you listen on why haven't we done that I don't yet know. shannon pull it together shannon, <laughs> poor thing she's like i've got like a million kids i, don't, I can't think of it all myself <laughs> poor shannon so much pressure <laughs> i think being a facebook admin is like shannon's unofficial full-time job <laughs> That she, on, get she gets for. she's like the admin for like twenty thousand facebook groups i don't even know why thank you for your dedication shannon, shannon. <laughs> and we'll just make the poll ourselves it's okay this yeah, time this time right. you're off the hook <laughs> we'll but, let this one slide yeah we'll let it slide but also share this episode and other episodes with your friends and family yep so you've been oiling your hair <laughs> Okay, you can tell that we've been, like, batching, like, recording all this stuff, because the more delirious we are, like, in a single episode, you know this is probably the last one that we are recording. Yes, right now it is 10 something. 10.05 p.m. We are at the end of our oh rope, gosh. but we are dedicated to our <laughs> fans. <laughs> we don't have fans. What, what are you talking about? Friends. We're dedicated to Aww, our friends. our friends. Love you guys. Um, they can't see you doing this. Watch the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I started using, I don't know if this is like, um, if it's just like a placebo effect or something. Oh no. I started using, I bought this like, um, rosemary infused castor oil off of Amazon. Bruh. And I started using it like a week and a half ago, and I feel like my hair is growing back because I was I lost a bunch of hair like like probably a couple months ago now, like postpartum, from postpartum. Yeah, but like okay, wait, look, I can see. you see like little baby hairs? I do. All, all on, around, my, on your that, crown that were not there a week yeah. and a half ago. Wow, that's crazy. And I'm like, wait, wait. Also, I'm not sure because I've had bangs and like I had them back today. Also, you can all see my five head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wearing it proudly today. <laughs> my poor sons have also inherited that from me. Jed's forehead is also not small, so. That's true. You, you know. Guys were, the kids were doomed. <laughs> Babe, maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I like had my hair pulled back today and I was like, wait, why do I have all of these like flyaways and little baby hairs I didn't have before? But I don't know if it's because my bangs were covering them and I just didn't know they were growing yeah. in. I don't know. But like, yeah, it it's like just growth. crazy. It looks like new growth. Yeah, today. it's like stuff that I didn't have there you before. Marcella, she already doesn't have. I don't water. have any hair. I can't afford to lose anymore. I'm already balding, like at twenty five. <laughs> with, with every child you have, like more bald spots. I appear. know. So I'm trying to be proactive here and yes. grow my hair back. So where did somehow. you get from Amazon? Yeah, Interesting. it's like, yeah, it's like, it's just castor oil and rosemary oil, like essential oil, oh. I think. And honestly, if You're you have, <laughs> if you have castor oil, you could probably just get make, rosemary yeah, oil and make it yourself. It, yeah. But I was like, oh my God, it's time. And plus it comes with like a cool, um, like nozzle thing. Oh yeah. So it, it's like a special kind of bottle yeah. too. So you know mom's bushes in the front are rosemary, right? Like, no. two of the bushes in the front. I didn't figure that out. My friend, Jasenia, figured that out. 
How does she know these things? She just, she's like a plant identifier. <laughs> is she like a forager? I think she wants to be. Either way, at any time we see a plant, she's like, oh, this is so-and-so. And, oh, did you see that there's mint growing here? And you know, <laughs> she was like, you know, your mom has rosemary growing in the front. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, you guys don't use rosemary? And then she pulled it up and made me smell it. And it's rosemary. It's straight up rosemary. I'll show you tomorrow. It's crazy. Wow. You learn something new every day. Either way, um, what's been going on with me is I'm trying to wear makeup every day and look presentable to the world. So How's that going? <laughs> this is one of the days. Yeah, one of the You're days. lucky days. So it was prompted by a few things. I've always wanted to do this. I feel like before when I was... A young, a young adult, a very young adult. I wore makeup every day for the wrong reasons because I Mm. thought I was ugly. (laughs) And I Mm. thought that I, I was only pretty when I had makeup on. And so then I went completely the other way where I was like, I don't want to wear makeup anymore because I genuinely did not recognize myself. Mm. Like without makeup. Yeah. Which is a scary place to be. Yeah. I do not want to be there. (laughs) And so now that I kind of healed my relationship with my, like, face, you know, and, like, completely feeling comfortable in my skin. And you know what you look like for real now. Yes, for real now. (laughs) Um, I've kind of, like, gradually been going back to wearing more makeup on a regular basis. And now that I have my tried and true, clean, zero waste makeup that for the past couple years I've been trying everything, like... You can name a clean beauty product that has like that's in the zero waste community and I've tried it and there's a lot of really bad ones but mm. I have like these three companies that I really stand behind. One of them is Alate Cosmetics, River Organics and Fat and Moon and those three are just the best. Best for quality and for price and the packaging is just phenomenal. So are there like specific products that you like from the specific companies or yes. are they just like all around i think they're really all good. around just fabulous companies but okay. i currently am using specific products okay yeah. but yeah i would trust any and any of their products and i can link that um in the show notes because i was talking about it recently somewhere else and people asked me to to link those because a lot of people like they want to figure out like how they can get better packaging for makeup, but there's so much out there. It's very overwhelming. Yeah, and it's whatever's out there is also usually very expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. And so there is some investment with some of them, like some of them that have reusable packaging. Mm. Your first purchase is probably going to be a little bit more expensive, but mm-hmm. then after that, you can just get the refills, which are cheaper. Right. And then another makeup company that isn't technically like a zero waste product, but they are more sustainable and cleaner is. Pacifica and you can get that mm-hmm. in Ulta Beauty and you can get it online and they're very affordable. So yeah. if you're like dipping they're your toes. They're more like drugstore. Yeah, yeah. If you're dipping your toes in like the clean cosmetics <clears throat> arena, Pacifica is a great place to start. Yeah. And I stand by their products too. I just wish that they had more sustainable packaging, but they still have pretty good um, stuff. Um, but anyway, so I've been, now that I have like my core things and I've kind of figured out two looks that I can go back and forth between mm-hmm. on a regular basis, like a more done up look, which may be a little bit more eyeshadow and an extra layer of foundation mm-hmm. and eyeliner. And then another quick 10 minute, which I timed it <laughs> to make sure that it would fit in 10 minutes for my quick look. And that would be, I'm doing without the, the, um, eyeliner and I'm doing without, an extra layer of foundation. I'm just doing a sheer layer, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit of um, concealer if I have some acne. And then um, one thing that is a huge hack, especially if you get these products from the companies that I just listed, a lot of them can be used for several different things. So yeah. for example, my bronzer on my quick makeup days, I use it on my eyes as well as my blush on my eyes and my lips. And so those kind of products are the best because mm-hmm. then you can just do it all over your face, yeah. you know, yeah. multi-use. And it's, it cuts down the time of getting out another product. And, you know, it's just, so I've been really enjoying that and it's been fun. And I feel like when I have my makeup on during the day, especially if I'm working outside the home, I do feel a little bit more put together. And mm-hmm. there's a podcast, which we've plugged a couple times before called Homer, Homemaker Chic. And they talk about like putting on your uniform for the day, even Mm. if you're just a homemaker and you're, you're working primarily from home, 
that you put on actual clothes and you put on a little bit of makeup and you put your hair up and you're ready for your job. And I really liked like their philosophy behind it. They talk about it quite a bit. And one of them, she's like, I wear li- this particular lipstick every day and it just makes me feel like I'm ready for work, you mm-hmm. know? And I just really liked what they had to say about it. And I don't think it has to be a rule or that like you're lazy if you don't do this. But I feel like for somebody that struggles with like, getting like fatigue especially in the morning and like not feeling mentally ready to to get things done sometimes a little ritual does help me yeah um like making your coffee in the morning that, mm-hmm. that sort of thing so adding a, a small makeup routine to my morning ritual has really helped so nice yeah anyway cool. so yeah that's what's going on with me something new and fun and so why don't we take a little break and we'll come back with this week's topic I don't know about you, but I'm always on the hunt for a convenient shopping experience. However, too much of the stuff we buy today is made without any thought of how it will affect our families and the world tomorrow. What if there was an all-around better way to shop, with the convenience that we all want and the confidence that everything is made, packaged, and shipped sustainably? Earth Hero is exactly that. Earth Hero is a one-stop shop for all your sustainable and eco-friendly products. They have so many products ranging from beauty supplies, cleaning products, homeware, clothing, baby essentials, and so much more. Join us today on our sustainable journey by using promo code Young and Wifed Up for 10% off your entire purchase. Make sure to click the Earth Hero link on our website at youngandwifedup.com to start shopping today. Okay, guys, so this week we're, I'm really excited about this episode because it's casual and chill and we're just going to go through our Pinterest boards together. So, What we're going to do is we're going to talk about our recipe boards. And uh, some of us are a little bit more organized, like myself. (laughs) Mine are organized, but my boards are very full. Like, they date back to, like, 2015. My boards, boards I just recently in the past year updated. And, Mm. like, so that's, ooh, so that's probably why they're a little bit more cleaner and not as much because I had all these recipes from before I had food problems. Oh yeah. You're like, that has lots of cheese. Can't can't do that. that. (laughs) Gotta get rid of that one. So I, it was making me sad because there was a lot of things that I wrote. Like there was just one guys, there's this one recipe for this, um, creamy, um, chicken tortilla soup. And it's just full of dairy and it was the best, and Ryan and I would eat it, like, so much. It was so bomb, and never again. Anyway, so that, <laughs> is, that is void from my list, but maybe you'll have some good dairy. dairy oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's going to be a lot of balance here. So, you have something, you have something you want to say? Nope. <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go through my air fryer folder first. So, when I first got an air fryer, it was because... One of my good friends, Ayana, had given it to us for Christmas a few years ago. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they bought it for us. Yeah. And it was honestly, like, probably one of the most practical and amazing gifts I've ever gotten. (laughs) It's like you don't know how much you need an air fryer until you have one. And then it cuts down so much time and effort. I honestly could probably do an entire episode about air fryer meals because we use it several times a day. Several times. Oh, yeah, I believe it. So, um, but there's some things in my Pinterest board that I think are, and we'll link our Pinterest boards for you guys. So you guys can get visuals for all of this. Um, There's a few things that I first, when I was first learning how to use my air fryer, that I really wanted to get down. And the main thing was some good crispy chicken. And the other thing was some veggies. So the two um, veggies that I really, really like is making potato wedges. So, you know, I haven't tried that yet. So easy. It is the easiest thing you can make. You can make tons of it and you can use any potato. My favorite is red potatoes. And there's instructions, obviously, for all of the recipes that we talk about. There's going to be instructions Mm -hmm. and ingredients and everything, but just kind of touching on the main thing. All you really need is some potatoes, some oil, and some seasonings. You chop it all up. You don't have to boil them before or anything. And you, I just do it, like, honestly, since I've had the air fryer for a while now, I really feel out. I don't really, like, do mm. the exact time and temperature because everybody's air fryers are different. That's true, yeah. But um, 
my usual like rule of thumb is 390 and then I do eight minutes and then I shake them and kind of see how they're doing, poke them with a fork. And then I'll do five minute intervals after that. Um, but yeah, so good. So easy. It's really good for when you're having a bunch of people over because potatoes are generally pretty cheap mm -hmm. and also good to have for lunches. Um, if you have a leftover, you can make some with some eggs. It's just just a staple. Um, and then another staple that I have in my air fryer is um, garlic green beans. So good. I never want green beans any other way. I used to put my green beans in the oven and those are really good, you know, but it would take forever for them to get nice and crispy and mm -hmm. then still juicy on in the on, on the inside. And this air, air fryer recipe that I use, all you need is some minced garlic, some seasonings, again, some olive oil. And again, with an air fryer, you don't need any oil. So if you're trying not yeah. to do oil, you don't Sometimes have to. Sometimes it helps it get a little bit crispy. Helps crispier. it get a little bit more caramelized. Yeah. yeah. The texture that I'm really looking for, I really do want the oil on it. But yeah, I, I do check them um, every five minutes. And I like to get a bag from Imperfect Foods or from Trader Joe's, throwing it in the air fryer. And they're so good. Like best green beans I've ever had. So those are my two favorite staples for, for my air fryer. And then I also have this copycat Chick-fil-A um, chicken nuggets that are super mm. good in the air fryer. Please check out that, that recipe. It is really, really good. And you can modify if you're gluten-free, you can modify the flour. What you can cut the do dairy. they use? Uh, tenderloins. Oh, okay. And then you just kind of make them into little nugs. Yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But tenderloins is usually the best. If you're if you're doing Man, nuggets, I just had tenderloins the other day too. Yeah, I could have made some nuggets. Oh well. Now you know. Anyway, so do you have an air fryer folder going on? Nope. <laughs> so, okay, so what do you want to talk about first? Okay, so I have my my Okay. I need to preface this. <laughs> Because how you are organizing your recipe boards totally is different. completely different. Because yeah. I'm going by meal. Mm, so I have I a breakfast board. Okay. I have like a salad board. I have an entree board. Dessert. So what's the first Cocktails. Meal? Um, I mean, honestly, like I think probably in the last like year or two, the majority of, maybe not the majority, but there was like a season where I was like pinning a lot of breakfast boards. Like. Need some breakfast inspo. Like, no, I mean like a pancake board. Like Whoa. a charcuterie pancake Whoa. board. And like waffle boards, croissant boards, bagel boards. That's what a, else? That's a Cinnamon up. roll board like a ton of stuff like okay, that i'm excited to look at that um that's kind of like in the middle of my like breakfast board thing i have a lot of like overnight oats which i don't really do overnight oats anymore but i mean that's usually a really quick breakfast i really like those a lot also like breakfast um bento box type things to okay, like that meal like? prep um i mean kind of like the same thing as like doing a board just like more condensed probably like this one is like a bagel box it has like smoked salmon hard boiled egg cucumbers wow. bagel cream cheese or you have like a pancake box which is like protein pancakes mixed berries yogurt granola things like that um so yeah and then for some reason i gravitate a lot towards like lemon poppy seed stuff like Dude, I've made same. lemon poppy seed pancakes. I think Jed made them one time and they were mm. so good. Um, yeah, so I have like, a, I have like this vegan lemon poppy seed pancake recipe on here that looks bomb. Okay, I need that recipe ASAP. <laughs> yeah, also like, um, like eggs and um, veggie stuff, like eggs and um, like asparagus and Parmesan type thing, which that sounds pretty good. You know, Today, Ryan made our usual avocado toast yeah. with egg. And Are you I guys ever going to like... I started to gag today. It <gasps> it's happened. happening. It finally happened to me. It happened to him once before and then we took a long break and then we came back to it and I was so happy because I missed it so much. And yeah. now, literally, like, I'm like, I'll never get bored of this. I love it. And this morning, I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> 
And Ryan was shocked. We were both shocked. And I was like, babe, I can't. So I what are you going to do now? No, I'm going to look at your Pinterest board. <laughs> Like today at Whole Weedery, I got some vegan cream cheese so we can do bagels and then some sausages and some fruit. Mm. So maybe we'll do something like that. I don't know. Yeah. It's stressing me out a yeah. little bit. There's also like some like quiche recipes on here too, Ooh, which I, got, I knew. I got a quiche. I know recipe quiche too. like recipes usually have cheese in them, but you can make them dairy free. I got it. I have a quiche recipe okay. that's really good. And yeah. uh, baked goods galore, like scones and. All that sort I get of down stuff. with your scones, Marcella. Thank you. I get down fun. with my scones too. They're really good. Yeah. Cool. So is that it for your, your breakfast board? Yeah, that's the majority of what I, I have on there. I never even thought to do a charcuterie board for breakfast. We, you know what? We did a pancake board for New Year's a couple of years ago. So we, I made a bunch of like. Pa- was I there? No, it was just me and <laughs> Jed like, and what? Seth. Um. Yeah, I think it. When was that? It may have been right after Seth turned one. Mm. So the following month. Um, Because his birthday is in December. But yeah, I did like a bunch of like just regular sized pancakes and then berries and chocolate chips. And I made like an apple compote and like a bunch like syrups. I was there. And... We were there. Really? Yes. Now now that you said that, I I vividly remember. Huh. Oh, yeah. 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 It was when you guys lived in the apartment still. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good times. Yep. Okay. So my next board is my Instant Pot board. Mm. And I think that... Okay. I feel like your boards are categorized by what appliance you are planning on using. Well, because because when I'm cooking, I'm like, okay, do I have a long time or do I have a short time? That's true. Yeah. So if it's a slow cooker, I know I can prep it in the morning. Mm -hmm. If it's Instant Pot and Air Fryer, I know I can make it quick. And then I have like a regular dinner that's just like cooking casually and yeah. I have a lot of time. But yeah, so my Instant Pot board, there are a few things that I think are my staples. Um, as far as sweets go, I have this um, Instant Pot applesauce, which I've made for the family before. Mm, yeah, it was good. So good. And it's so easy. All you need is different colors of apples and cinnamon and brown sugar or coconut sugar. And that's literally all you need. Water. It's so cheap and it's so good and you can make a huge, huge portion of it. Like anytime I make it, I have enough for Ryan and I and I send some with Marcella and yeah. Seth loves it. And that, I and mean. it keeps really well because if you add some lemon juice in it, yeah. it keeps mm-hmm. really well. That would probably be good for apples that are about to go bad. Yes. No, they're re- it's really easy and fast and you, I would recommend using a potato, potato, potato. <laughs> Potato, potato masher. Potato. Potato masher. <laughs> Which mine broke and I can't find one anywhere. Oh. I can't find one at the dollar store. I can't find one yeah, at Target. Yeah, it's like they just stopped selling them. Yeah, I'm like, do they not exist? Just use a fork. No, it's terrible. It takes way too long. I hate that. <laughs> Speaking of mashed potatoes, you need this recipe for mashed potatoes. It is gluten-free, dairy-free, Whole30. So good. And I make it anytime I make mashed potatoes and nobody knows the difference. And it's so good and buttery. Nice. So my favorite. Um, Also, I have a recipe for how to cook the perfect instant pot rice, which there's the exact measurements. My husband makes this rice. I made it tonight. It's really good and easy. Anybody can make it. It's foolproof and you can do it with any rice. There's a couple of rice um well well, like between white rice and brown rice is really different yeah there's like a difference in time but it's the same measurements yeah Mm -hmm. um i also have a zupa toscana recipe Mm. which you can do dairy free or with dairy and then i also have a frozen meatball recipe which i made on sabbath this last time those meatballs that i made with the with the pasta oh yeah those are really good those are just frozen turkey meatballs and you throw it in the instant pot with some tomato sauce and a cup of water and the um, time and temperature is on my Pinterest board and it's so good you can make tons of meatballs that way nice really good for taking to like a church potluck too because you can keep the instant pot plugged in all of these are actually good church potluck anything with an instant pot or a slow cooker perfect for a church yeah perfect because then you don't have to worry about reheating it you can just plug it in at church yeah okay what's next for you um, I'm kind of going backwards. My next one is like my dessert board. Yum. 
I think most recently I was really getting into like Asian desserts, so like ube stuff. What is that? It's like purple potato. Oh, okay, okay, like a taro potato. No. Okay. Taro is a potato though. It's purple. No. Hang on. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? Ube <laughs> versus taro. Oh, are they cousins? <laughs> are they homies? Are they the same? They are both root vegetables. Ube is sweet with some likening it to honey, vanilla, or white chocolate. Mm. So you commonly see it in like Filipino dessert recipes. Um, On the other hand, taro is more of a raw, starchy, somewhat nutty flavor. So if you you prefer something with something like less sweet, taro is the way to go. Yeah. Or even people will use it in place of like purple yam. I guess. Mm. Anyway, so a lot of like ube stuff. Um, also, a lot of matcha stuff. I have like matcha mochi bars, matcha um, cookies. What else? Matcha. Okay. I made these white chocolate matcha brownies. Oh, guys. <laughs> They're so bomb. Was it easy? You know what? Yeah, I think so. It, it tasted like it was a labor because they were like no, super I don't remember. I don't remember flavor. it being that that crazy. Um, that yeah, that was a long time ago that I made them, but I still remember they were so 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 like texture and everything was like literally just perfect. So definitely find that on my Pinterest board. Um, and then I just have a lot of like again more lemon stuff. I'm just a lemon girl, like. <laughs> I like my lemon desserts. Um, Yeah, I'm not really like a cookie kind of person. I do have some of that. You know what I did make one time? I wonder if it's still in here. I made red velvet cake cookies. I thought I got it from... It might still be in my Pinterest board. I'm not... I'm not sure. But you essentially just take like a red velvet cake um, mix, mix like yeah. a box mix and then uh, the recipe just gives you a way to like alter it so you can make it like a cookie instead mm. of a cake and those like jed loves red velvet so i like made those for him and they're really good i think i made them twice the first time i burned the bottoms of them <gasps> so bad <laughs> because i was using like a little thin cheapy like oh yeah sheet pan or whatever but then the second time they came out perfect um so yeah that's kind of like the gist of like my dessert board that all sounds really good i i'm also a lemon Mm. person lemon poppy seed all the way you know what i was gonna make recently that i saw were these three ingredient healthy samoas although they're not called samoas anymore yeah, it's politically incorrect. Yeah, that Samoas were canceled. Um, <laughs> a cookie was canceled. It's made with like dates and coconut oil and chocolate and nuts or something like so it's that. Four ingredients. <laughs> it definitely says three ingredients. Let me look on the article right now to see what it says. Why do I not have Wi Fi? Anyway, I think that's. Oh, here we go. Dates, chocolate chips, and coconut oil. Oh, wow. Uh, coconut? Also coconut? Lightly coconut. toasted coconut? Yeah, like coconut shreds? Yeah. I don't know, but those looked pretty Yeah, that sounds pretty really good. good. So I'm going to move on to my slow cooker section. <laughs> next appliance. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have an instant pot, you also have a slow cooker because it's That's either true. or. Or if you have one of those classic crock pots, I have a big giant one that I love that I like making big things of chili Mm. or soup in so i have two soup recipes on here well i have three sorry i have three i have a gluten-free dairy-free zuba toscana i have a whole 30 gluten-free paleo um chicken tortilla soup and then i have just a good old authentic chicken noodle soup that you can't go wrong and you can modify that as much as you want um there is one thing in here that i see is left over from my dairy days and that's a white chicken chili and i think i saved it for when i have to cook for for like um somebody else because it's mm, really, really easy really easy and it would be good to bring to like new parents or yeah. somebody that's sick um that can have dairy and it it was a really tasty chili um and you can put tons of veggies in that one 
Um, one thing that I have been loving using my slow cooker for is making vegetable broth. I've talked about it before in past sustainable living episodes that I keep veggie scraps during the colder months instead of composting them. I put them in the freezer and then I make a big batch of vegetable broth and you can use that vegetable broth for literally anything. It's really handy to have when you do things in the instant pot because anytime you use an instant pot, you have to have liquid mm. and so if you want something that's a little bit more than water to add some flavor then using the veggie broth that you make in the crock pot is a great option and then i also have some good chicken recipes like a chicken barbecue chicken legs that you can just throw a whole bottle of barbecue sauce and chicken legs and you're good to go that's a really easy um meat and then there's one that i haven't tried that has been on my list for a while which is a slow cooker chicken tinga which it's uh, tinga is like the way they make it the spices and stuff mm -hmm. and i've been really into chicken tinga before um whenever i go out now and so i really want to make this one for tacos or burritos and stuff so that's one thing that i haven't made yet and then i also have a cilantro lime chicken taco meat lots of chicken we i don't eat red chicken meat. is so easy in the slow cooker and it's cheap yeah <laughs> you can buy true. tons and tons of chicken and you can make a lot of it for really cheap and uh, yeah and you can dress up chicken in a million ways yeah so i think chicken's just really versatile so yeah. anyway that's my snow slow my slow cooker section <laughs> <laughs> okay wait what was the did you have an instant pot soup of discana yeah i have two i have an instant pot what's one the and a what's one. the is this slow cooker maybe it's not because i just make mine over the stove have you what? seen this one? I have, but that one is a stove one. It is so good. Can you talk about it? What which one is that one on your soup section or your on my section? on my entrees is like my catch all for anything else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my entrees board. Okay, I have this. I've been making this specific um, soup discana recipe for probably like three or four years now possibly longer um and i've tried a lot of different soup discana recipes and this one in particular is apparently paleo dairy-free gluten-free whole 30 friendly what even is whole 30 what is whole 30 it's whole foods for 30 days yeah what do you do after 30 days you eat junk food <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding sorry for whole 30 Honestly, like technically I eat whole whole 30, except for I have sourdough and sugar, because you can't have sugar. Like most people that eat like mostly plant-based eat whole 30. So whole 30 is you can have vegan? No, no, you can have meat, but it oh. has to be like a certain, I don't know, it's okay. really hard to explain. <laughs> okay, so this specific one, although I think you could probably um Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Modify? Modify it, thank go. you. There we go. <laughs> you can probably modify this to be made in the Instant Pot and Slow Cooker. I just don't know what that would look like because that's yeah. not what the recipe is. But it's from the site 40aprons.com. 40, like four zero. 40 aprons.com. It's the healthy soup discana. And she uses, like, uh, coconut milk. I know the ones that you do yeah, use coconut, coconut milk, milk as well. Um, and she has, like, in her recipe, she has where you can make your own Italian sausage. She gives the option of making your own Italian sausage if you're, like, being really strict about certain things. But I just buy a pound of yeah. Italian sausage just because I, it's not that big of a deal. And she gives that option, too. You can do either or. But, man, it is so good. I almost sometimes prefer this one over I the do. actual, like, yes. one from Olive Garden. I, I definitely prefer my homemade over the Olive yeah. Garden Yeah. Also, like, I know Soup Discana is not specifically from Olive Garden. That's just what <laughs> our experience is. They're like, what's Olive Garden? Um, but, yeah, that's <laughs> just, like, the most general, like, restaurant I can connect it to is Olive Garden. <laughs> Anyway, in my in my entrees uh, board, I have a lot of like salmon, um, a lot of like again Asian inspired. I just really gravitate towards like Asian cuisine 
for some reason i think it's like it's really fresh and like i love the ingredients that they use but then on the opposite end i've got like lasagnas like up the wazoo with cheese like (laughs) (laughs) i have this um slow cooker meatloaf recipe that's really bomb from a slow cooker meatloaf yeah what Mm -hmm. how does that even work I don't know, bro. It just does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, you like you make the loaf and then you just like it just cooks in the slow cooker. I don't know. Like, I don't know how to. What? <laughs> I'm going to have to look at that recipe. Yeah. I, there's a lot of slow cooker meatloaf recipes, actually. Wow. Um, I think most recently, again, for some reason, I've been getting into a lot of the bento box lunches and stuff i have a lot of bento box stuff um at the top of my entree board here also um steamed buns whoa like look at this doesn't that look good wow yeah it does look good. they're like the bao buns i'm pretty yeah. sure that's how you say yeah. it the little steamed like dumpling looking buns um wow yeah a lot of like i think the majority of my entrees board is like either asian or italian inspired because usually that's what not just me but also what jed likes too um it's so funny our like cuisines are so different they're so different so so different yeah although i will say we do also make a lot of mexican food yeah that's because that's very easy yeah (laughs) so anyway so I also have a catch-all dinner board or entree mm-hmm. board. And on here, I don't only just have meals. I have like things like making crispy sweet potato fries in the oven or making cheese alternatives. Like I have the nacho cheese, the game changer nacho cheese. I have a cashew mozzarella. I have things like that. And then I also have lots of Mediterranean bowls. So I don't know. Recently, I think we've been gravitating to a lot of Indian food and Mediterranean food. and then also. We make primarily um, Mexican cuisine. Mm. That's probably because that's what we grew up eating for the most part and what we were taught to cook. So it's just like a go to. I don't even I don't even have recipes really for that. Yeah. It's just genuinely like what I just know how to make off off the cuff, Mm. you know. Um, I also have some really good sides such as like scalloped potatoes that are dairy free. Um, there's a meatloaf, there's, um, oven roasted corn. I have some healthy gravies. I have a green bean casserole that I make for Thanksgiving every year. And it's so bomb. And that's also, um, dairy free. And then uh, there was one thing. Oh, I want, I'm still trying to get myself to make a vegan pesto. It's been on my to-do list and I know it's going to be super easy, but it's just one of those things that I haven't tried yet Mm. and there's a lot of different versions of vegan pestos but i really want to try to make my own because it does seem to be a cheaper alternative than buying a like a jar jar of it jar pesto is expensive yeah and recently i made a vegan spinach artichoke jet dip which is in this board as well and it was a huge hit i brought it to church and it was completely gone super good and then i also made for new year's morning I made a dairy-free, grain-free spinach and bacon quiche, and that was so good. And then I found out that day that my husband doesn't like quiche at all. I was like, I'm going to make a quiche. It's going to be great. And he, like, never said anything. And then I find out later that he doesn't even like quiche. <laughs> so I ate the rest of the quiche. He ate it, and, you know, he said he liked it. You should have brought some over. I would have had know. the rest. I know. Seth would have had the rest. And then I also have some meals in here that I, you know, keep in mind for when I have people like vegetarian Mm. people that I need to cook for or people that eat keto. And I want to be able to have options for when we offer hospitality because I know I appreciate it when people accommodate my food um, sensitivities and restrictions. And so I try to have kind of a a list for those people as well. So that's it for my catch all board. Do you have another board? Um, I have two more boards. I think I probably, well, do, are we going to go over drinks too or no? Yeah. Okay. So then board. I have two more, two more boards. Um, well, technically three, but one of them's kind of lame and I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> what is, what? <laughs> it's my salad board and it's just boring. Yeah, I get it. 
Nobody um, wants to talk about a salad. Nobody wants to talk about a salad. Um, okay, so I have a side dishes and snacks board. Wow. So sometimes, like, when I'm meal planning, I'm either looking for a recipe for the main portion of the meal, or I'm like, I just want, like, a simple meal. Like, I just want to do some, like, seasoned chicken breast, not it. Right. But then I want to do, like, a fancier side dish and, like, spend more time and, like, um, energy on the side dish. So I have in here, wow, a lot of cauliflower stuff, apparently. <laughs> Fried cauliflower. I have these, like, shoestring fries, like have lemon salt. Have you made salt. buffalo bu- cauliflower in the air fryer? I have, not in the air fryer. Oh, girl. I've done them in the oven, but they're probably not as good at so okay. much better than air fryer. I'll have to try that. Yeah. Um, it's been a while since I made. It's kind of cauliflower is like a pain for me. It is a pain. It's a lot. It's it's something that you have to work really hard to make taste good. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, like a lot of. But labor. then when you get it, like it, it does really, really taste yeah. really good. Um, I'm trying to see here. You know what? I'm seeing. I have a lot of like. Um, that's <laughs> more stuff that you can't have. <laughs> it's okay. Our listeners like, can have it. That's true. Um, like these like goat cheese with like some kind of berry or apple on like a little crostini like bread Ooh. situation. Like hors d'oeuvres, I guess. Wow. Um, which I have made some of those before. And those are really good. Um, I do have this one specific recipe for roasted artichokes and wow it's literally it's literally i love artichokes i love (laughs) it's called the most amazing roasted artichokes and they quite literally are the most amazing roasted artichokes (laughs) um it's from the website gimme some (laughs) oven.com that's kind of a funny name (laughs) um so yeah i've also been making this specific roasted artichoke recipe for a really long time i know some people steam artichokes But I kind of (laughs) prefer them roasted. You have to be very careful, though, because, like, from one minute to the next, they go from, like, not being done to being burned. Oh, no. Temperamental. You have to be very careful, like, keeping a really close eye on them when you're baking them. But these are bomb. Usually I'll make, sometimes I'll make, like, a sort of, like, mayo lemon type sauce with it. Or I'll do just, like, lemon butter garlic sauce and it is so 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 good um really good yeah i have these oh these gluten-free cheddar bay biscuits i think i've also made these ones before yeah i think so these are also really good if you don't know what the cheddar bay biscuits are if you've ever been again i'm like associating it to to this restaurant to red lobster um (laughs) it's a dupe yeah from (laughs) mynaturalfamily.com Um, I don't think these are dairy free. No, they're definitely not dairy free. <laughs> <laughs> like four different But types. if you can do dairy and you can't do gluten, this is a really good cheddar bay biscuit yeah. recipe. Um the rest of it is just like like dips and like uh little pastry things and um more steamed buns, apparently. I have, <laughs> I have spring rolls in here. I have these crispy smashed Parmesan rosemary potatoes that look amazing, and I haven't made them yet, so maybe I'll do that one soon. Um, a lot of potato stuff, too, like uh, roasted potato recipes and things like yeah. that. So Anyway, oh, I have a Brazilian cheese bread recipe. Wow. wow. <laughs> Our friend who's from Brazil, she brought these, uh, these Brazilian cheese bread bite things called brazi bites that you can buy at like target or walmart or so or costco yeah. i think she said and they were really good i know you can try one yeah but it looked really good <laughs> they were really good and she was like this is really similar to like what's like you know Authentic. how we actually make yeah. it in brazil so wow are huh. you gonna buy them maybe they have kind of the same thing at trader joe's in their frozen section and They're those were really food. good mm-hmm. yeah so anyway, my next board is a drink board and it's sip. Like how I did that. <laughs> sip. Okay, anyway. So That's there are cheesy. like seven different types of golden milk lattes on here. Mm. Which, oh, we're doing those kinds of drinks. Okay. Well, I have I have two cocktails. 
in your drinks board? I have an entire board dedicated to You know what? Because I always just, I'm just, when I know I like it, I stick to it. I make myself a mm. Moscow Mule or I'll have a glass of wine mm. or a really good beer and I'm set. I don't, you know I what don't care Jed, to make anything else. Jed used to make, like a couple years ago, were really good pina coladas. That's remember right. that? I remember that season. <laughs> I would have one every night for like, I think I had one every night for like a week straight because they were so bomb. We spent way too much money on alcohol. Yeah. You just had a bottle of Malibu all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I have a few golden milk turmeric lattes. Um, one is like regular almond milk. There's one with cashew milk and there's a few that are like homemade mixes for you to gift people. And then I also have... A lemonade recipe, which started my lemonade fiasco, and Mm. I kind of modified it to match my taste and my family's taste when I was making it regularly. I also have the classic Moscow Mule recipe, which I still make pretty often, and then I also have a almond milk horchata that I haven't tried yet, but it's been on again one of those things that's one of my to-do lists that i've had for a long time and i also have a couple teas like a cinnamon sore throat tea and some other herbal teas that i've been wanting to try to make my own blend so yeah like i said i know what i like to drink i don't usually venture out from Mm, there but there is a couple tiktok accounts that i follow that do cocktails yeah and maybe I'll try to venture out later on. But now I'm just like, I, I, I have a it, bottle of yeah. vodka and I'm just using that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's hard too because like... You have with, to have a full bar. Yeah, like with alcohol, like with alcoholic drinks, you have to like, if you just want one drink to try it, you can't just buy enough alcohol for that drink. Exactly. Like you have to buy the whole thing. Yeah. So I can understand. Yeah, it's just yeah, a nightmare. I get it. Um... <laughs> I do have, like, a drink sport that's similar to what you were talking about called Yummy Drinks. It's very original. (laughs) Um, But it has, like, uh, kind of the same stuff. It has, like, a lot of, like, fruit-infused water recipes, teas, matcha, golden milk teas, chais, um, stuff like that. But smoothies, I think, are on there, too, which are really good. But on my, like, on my cocktail board... At the beginning of it, I was posting a lot of stuff that was, like, chocolate Kahlua, like, heavy stuff like that. Like, dessert drinks. Yeah. But then, as time goes on, like, this Got a little older. Got a little wiser. The the most, like, recent one that I posted was this chamomile honey and whiskey cocktail. And it looks really good. Wow, yeah, that does look really good. Um, Also, this strawberry basil margarita summer cocktail looks amazing. I have have made that before. And And it was really good. A minted mimosa punch. Like... Yum. Yeah. These are all really good summer drinks, too. White peach froze. Wow. With simple syrup. And then I also have these other, like, random... What is this? Ooh, this, like, lemon raspberry sorbet Prosecco floats, where you, like, put, like, raspberry sorbet in a glass of Prosecco. Wow. That sounds really good. Doesn't that look really good? Oh, yeah. You make all the cocktails and then I'll I drink will. them. <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't have a lot on this board, but yeah, that's kind of like the most recent. Just a lot of like, it's fruity and bougie. Like, that's the best way I can wow. describe it. Can't go wrong with fruity and bougie. No. That's it. <laughs> that's about, that's about it for all of my like food stuff. I think I have awesome. like a kombucha board when we were like attempting kombucha a few R&D. years ago. <laughs> it exploded. One of the bottles did explode, unfortunately. We did RIP. have some really, really tasty There were some kombucha, really good ones, yeah. for sure. But, but then yeah. my parents moved and my mom had all of our kombucha, like all the scobies and everything. We never got back into it. We just eventually ended up just like... With fermenting things, you really have to be You have dedicated. to be on top of it, yeah. I just, you know, I wasn't at a good time in my life to, you know... To I be making it. kombucha. I totally get it. 
Okay, there I'm on my last board and that's my dessert board. And this is where I thrive because <laughs> when I first started eating differently, I think that the biggest thing I wanted to change was dessert because mm. it was really easy for me to find alternatives everywhere else with all my regular meals. It wasn't really hard for me to do that. Yeah. But with desserts, I felt like I was missing out on so many delicious things. And, you know, it does happen where I go to people's events or things at church and I can't partake in the sweets. And it makes me sad, you know, but I try to always have stuff available that I can make at home like or at home, I yeah. can bring. And there are a few things that I've tried that are just phenomenal. And those are all on my Pinterest board including this beautiful gluten-free vegan orange cake. I made it one time and I cannot believe I didn't make it again because it was amazing and so beautiful. Like it was the prettiest cake I've ever made, including a homemade icing. Mm. It was so good. So easy. Did I try that one? Yeah, it was really good. I've also made a homemade Mm. carrot cake, which was really good. Loved that one. I made a raw vegan banana cream pie the last time we did a pie auction, and that was a favorite as well. And I have some pumpkin pies that I've made. Um, What else? Gluten-free pizzuki. I've made some oat flour cinnamon rolls. Mm. Um, There's a couple things in my board that I haven't tried yet, including a chai spiced quick bread, which looks really delicious. And then there's some soft banana bread cookies that look really good that I haven't tried yet. Um, My gluten-free cookies that if I want to make it from scratch, I have two recipes that I completely stand behind. One is a peanut butter cookie that is so easy. Everybody has these ingredients and it's gluten-free and dairy-free. And then also some gluten-free, dairy-free chocolate chip cookies that I've made from scratch can't go wrong with those. Usually I just use the almond flour from making almond milk or oat flour from making oat milk. And they always turn out great. Most of the time recently, I haven't been baking a whole lot. I was baking a, a lot in the first couple of years of changing my eating habits. And now I've found some really good pre-made mixes yeah. <laughs> for when I'm in a pinch. Um, my favorite ones are from Imperfect Foods. They're just the best there's brownie mixes autos man mixes. look for autos so good. <laughs> autos is amazing and there's one the most recent pin i have made is for a dairy-free shamrock shake and i'm gonna make it probably next week can you make me some yes okay. because everybody was getting the shamrock shake and i just love you know what i saw shake. at the whole weedery today they have a vegan shamrock shake did you what? see that it was it was like the biggest sign that they had this whole special okay. on their vegan shamrock Forget shake. Forget all of that. I'm not making it. I'm going to the whole eatery <laughs> and getting a shamrock shake. Hopefully I don't miss it because it's probably only for the month of March. I'm literally going to drive there tomorrow to get it. We were just there today. Yeah, it said like uh, like it was made with almond milk or what? whatever. Yeah, I'm surprised. you. It was like, I was it so, was literally like that big I of a was sign. hyper fixated on seeing this beautiful carrot cake that I told Marcel <laughs> and my mom that I want for my birthday. It was this amazing looking vegan, vegan carrot, carrot, cake. carrot cake. And I was like, this is what I want for my birthday. Take they have so much stuff there. It's all like, they have all these like hidden treasures in the store. Yeah. If you're local and you haven't been, you should totally go. I love the whole way there. Um, I wanted to make another point about like the dairy free like dessert thing. I think it's like really, it's probably way more beneficial to just learn how to make your own desserts, especially if you need like alternatives, because most of the time the alternative dessert stuff is just packed with garbage yeah and like it's really additives processed. and like it's super processed so like being able to make your own stuff and like know exactly what's in it is yeah really good you know one thing that's dairy free that nobody knows about unless you're like looking for it is the cinnamon rolls from trader joe's they're dairy free. really yep there's gluten in them so if you have a gluten problem <laughs> don't. don't eat it <laughs> But yeah, I like the icing is dairy free everything and everything is dairy free. It is so wow. Good. I might I'm, go there tomorrow. I always think I I I don't know what's wrong with me. The last like three times I've been at Trader Joe's, I I go you know it's like buy the eggs and then buy you know yeah. whatever, and I'm like I need cinnamon rolls. 
And then... You forget every time. Every time. I always make sure to have one of those in my fridge because Ryan loves them. And, like, it's just... They're really good. They're such a good treat. Yeah. They're full of sugar, but just... Sometimes you just gotta have some. And I, mean, you know what I mean, balance it with some protein, it's all about, it's all and balance, you'll be man. fine. Yeah, <laughs> have it with some eggs or something. Yeah. I don't know. One of the biggest things with intuitive eating that I've learned is to have make make it make all of the sweets accessible to you in your home. That way, when you have a craving, you can satisfy it, and then it, you can move on from it. Mm. And so there are tons of sweets in my cabinets and in my fridge. And do I eat them all day? Absolutely not. But when I have a craving, I know it's there for me, and I'm not like, we need to go to McDonald's right now. You know what I mean? I feel that way for yeah. sure. But sometimes there are things it's like, I can only get this at McDonald's. That's true. Like a McFlurry. Yeah. yeah. I can't make that. That's true. You know? How do you make a McFlurry? Anyway, that's... I don't want to know what's in a McFlurry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know what they put in it. <laughs> You're like, I don't care. Just don't tell me. Okay, guys. Well, this was really fun. Yeah. I hope you guys got some in, 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 info. Inspo. Info and inspo. Info and inspo. And check out our Pinterest board. So we're going to take a break and we're going to come back with this week's listener recommendation. Marcella, guess what? What? Last night, I made our dinner entirely out of incredible food that could have been thrown out as waste and headed to the landfill. No way. How? Imperfect Foods. Imperfect Foods is a weekly grocery delivery service on a mission to build a better, less wasteful food system. They offer a full lineup of sustainable, affordable groceries that make the weekly tour of grocery shopping an effortless and delightful experience. Imperfect Foods partners with food suppliers, farmers, and small businesses to ensure that delicious food goes into our pantries and instead of the landfill. I feel like you started that sentence really weird. I did. Anyway, you guys have got to try it. Get $20 off your first Imperfect Foods delivery by using our link at youngandwifedup.com. Get it. Okay, guys, we have a recommendation from Mary C. And Mary actually is the one that won our $20 Target gift card. Oh! oh I want to know what you got, girlfriend. Did you did you buy some groceries with it? I hope not. I hope you got treat yourself and got, like, some makeup or home decor or something. <laughs> but Close. I don't know. she has a hack for us. So her kitchen hack, and she includes a picture because that's so helpful. If you want to go on our Facebook group, Young and Wiped Up, it's one of the pinned announcements. Hers is the top comment. She talks about having a good pair of kitchen shears. She said that she has Cutco shears, which I think is an MLM that her husband was a part of Mm. um, back in the day. And she said she uses them to cut the fat off of chicken. She uses Mm. them to cut pizza and to bites for her toddler and other Mm. foods, cutting green onions, etc. You know, another thing that I've thought about for using kitchen shears is flowers. I always struggle with cutting flower stems with regular oh no oh you can't it is a you'll break up mirror you'll yeah. break your scissors it's horrible you know what i end up doing it's so ghetto guys i literally do like, you get us like serrated knife or something no i bend i bend it back and forth until it breaks if you're a florist listening to this you're probably my mother-in-law's throwing fainting. up right now <laughs> <Yeah>. currently <laughs> she's like oh. You do what? I'm sorry, what? You bend them? Yeah, I just bend them. <laughs> oh my sometimes, god. Sometimes I bend them and don't even try to break them off. I just bend them and throw them in my face. <laughs> it's so violent. I know. <laughs> but I don't have any kitchen shears. So thank you, Yeah, Mary. why don't you have kitchen shears? I have it some, but they're is. so dull. They're horrible. Oh. I yeah, because they usually ones. come with like a knife block set. I will say yes. her point about like cutting up pizza or whatever, we... I pretty much exclusively use kitchen shears to cut up food for Seth. I don't bother with getting a cutting board out, getting a knife out. Sometimes I'll do that. It depends on what it's for. Like, if I'm cutting, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't cut grapes and tomatoes with (laughs) kitchen shears. You kind of have to use a knife. But, like, everything else I use kitchen shears for. It is way, 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 way easier. Also, cutting up, like, green onions. You know? She said green onions. Just Thank you, on. Mary, for your Thanks, hack. Mary. It inspired me to go and try to find a good pair of kitchen shears. You should. Maybe Amazon has You know some. what, though? I got a two-pack. Do you know the blue and black ones that yeah, I have? Where? They're really good on Amazon. Can you send me that link? No. Please do. 
Just look up a two pack of kitchen oh my chairs. Gosh. It's just the blue and black <laughs> what one. What is the wrong one? It's a light blue and black <laughs> pair of kitchen shoes. And they have the little like sheets or covers or whatever. For oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, guys, thank you for tuning in this week, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.